Big news for REST support in the UEFI BIOS firmware space. Here's the REST C book that talks about UEFI REST based firmware support. And currently it is in tier three. We'll be talking about this because there has been a change to that and is one of the most important things that has happened over the last week. So what this project is, is the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, also known as UEFI, target for applications, drivers, and core UEFI binaries. So most of us know this as BIOS firmware or support, and that's right, there's development being made in Rust for it. The three targets that are available here are ARCH64, I686, and the most popular here, the x86 64-bit instruction set. The maintainers here are David Rainsberg and Nicholas Bishop, and we're going to be checking out how a Rust-based BIOS firmware may be coming to you soon. So this all really begins with a blog post from David, which we're going to read, but you'll notice the mention of Tier 3 and the architectures that are going to be supported. Well, the big news here is that the Rust-based BIOS has now been moved from Tier 3 to Tier 2, which is great news, and we'll talk about what that means and how this could accelerate Rust programming, specifically for UEFI-based BIOS in Linux. So in this post, towards stable Rust UEFI firmware, while TinoCore EDK2 still dominates the UEFI development world, there has been continuous effort to enable Rust for firmware development, which is quite exciting. Another place where Rust can potentially update our experiences, but so far the tools involved have not been stabilized. We now start an effort to remedy this and to get stable Rust support for UEFI targets. That has been the goal, and that goal would be achieved by going from Tier 3 to Tier 2. This also allows building Rust UEFI applications with a standard compiler by simply passing a target and then an architecture that you want to know into Cargo or something like Rust. Unfortunately, Tier 3 support means no compiler builds are distributed via the Rust release channel, nor does Rust continuous integration guarantee the target builds successfully. Moreover, this implies that a nightly unstable compiler is required to build those targets, even though no nightly Rust language features are required. So basically, this uh, blog post is an outline of why it would be nice to get Rust UEFI firmware into the Tier 2 support, and currently how it is on Tier 3 and hindering the development of a proper stable firmware. And while this Red Hat contributor has been pushing to get the firmware promoted in development, they have finally broken through and able to get the classification level from Tier 3 to Tier 2 changed. So now the official compiler builds with the Rust release channel. So let's talk about that promotion a little more and the original proposal here, which has been closed and accepted. The proposal was that they'd raise all three currently merged UEFI targets to tier two, according to the policy for tiers. So we already talked about these three types of architectures or instruction sets. Please note that all three targets are very similar, that they are already tier two or even tier one. So basically the targets that they're talking about is the equivalent targets it seems in other languages. So one's already at tier two, two others are at tier one. The UEFI targets all inherit from MSVC base and are almost equivalent to their Windows targets except for a Arch 64. There's currently no Windows target for various reasons. And then they go into what the tier policy actually means for the project and so on and so forth. But to break some things down with this promotion from tier three, to tier two. It's so new that this hasn't even been updated yet. I'm sure we'll be seeing this in the Rust C book. But with the promotion, it will also remove some of the red tape and make it easier to start working for UEFI using Rust, especially for other developers looking to join the Rust UEFI firmware team, since these targets now have higher priority in Rust builds. A couple features there with tier two is really that there's going to be one automatic builds made for the UEFI firmware and to automatic or auto continuous integration, which is just a fancy way to say code updates will now be readily merged into the main Rust repository, which is all exciting news because that means for us, we should be seeing more development and perhaps some of these targets available for Linux, specifically for our UEFI based firmware, and hopefully we'll be seeing some updates to BIOS and benefiting from this development 
in our Linux builds. It's been quite exciting for Rust in the Linux kernel over the last few months with things such as comparisons to the C equivalent drivers in the kernel that have actually featured the same performance speeds, which I'll put a link in the description below to on one of my videos. Also, Rust Linux driver support has been merged into the Linux 6.1 kernel with basic infrastructure for programming with Rust. That's another big one. We're hopefully going to see GCC Rust coming in with a GCC version 13 utilities and other great things for the ever-growing programming language that is known as Rust. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Would you like to see Rust in your BIOS? And make sure to smash that like button for me. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.